flow again. We ran out of time on that last example. So we're comparing aluminum or aluminum with a positive three plus charge, the aluminum cation. So which one will be bigger? You would be correct if you said aluminum. And let's talk about why. Because they have, um, aluminum has cleared out its shell, looking at the periodic table, the aluminum loses and drops down to become like neon, it would lose a shell and be smaller if it becomes the three plus cation. So aluminum, the element, the atom, the neutral atom has three rings, three energy levels for the electrons, while aluminum, the cation, would drop down, become like neon, and only have two energy levels. So which one is bigger, aluminum? Um, so aluminum has the third level, and aluminum three plus only has the second level. So it beca because it has more electron shells. Next one, we've got to be careful and kind of crafty when we think about it. Chlorine minus and calcium two plus. Let's kind of work this through. So chlorine has 17 protons. If it has a negative one charge, that must mean there are 18 electrons. Calcium has 20 protons. If it has a two plus charge, that means it has to have 18 electrons. Well, holy cow, look at that. That is an isoelectronic pair right there. So the same number of electrons, they both actually have a configuration. Chlorine became like argon, calcium became like argon. So they both have a configuration like argon and they both now only have three energy levels. So this is like the configuration of argon. So which one will be smaller? Which one will be bigger? Now it's gonna be all about attraction. So calcium, 20 protons, more attraction. So if there is more attraction, what does that mean? That means the, the nucleus pulls in harder on the cloud, shrinks the cloud. So if there's more attraction, it is going to be smaller. So chlorine has less attraction. So it will be bigger. So which one is bigger? Chlorine. Why? Because there is less attraction. And they both at this point are in the third energy level once we've gained and lost those electrons. Good. Okay, let's flip the page. Now we're going to go through and look at um, a couple of different trends. We're going to look at ionization energy, um, electronegativity, and electron affinity. These all will kind of follow the same trend. We're going to look through um, what each of them does and why. In reality, it all goes back to attraction. So let's first define ionization energy. It is the energy required, required to remove one electron. So to create an ion, to remove one electron. How is this related to attraction? So the more attraction there is, the more attraction there is, this means that it will be harder to remove the electron. This one, noble gases will come back into the equation. Noble gases have the highest ionization. Energy. They do not want to lose any electrons because they are happy, they are good. So here's your kind of your quick, your quick summary. High attraction is equal to a high ionization energy. So we're going to use IE a lot to abbreviate, they, abbreviate that ionization energy. Um, we have a lot of different terms to keep straight this chapter, so make sure you're paying attention to that vocabulary. So here's a table of the ionization energy for the first 20 elements. So we have hydrogen and helium. That's period one. Look, as we go from left to right, from hydrogen to helium, attraction goes up. So this is period one. Um, period two, period three, and we're starting period four. Period two, look at that. All the energies go up. Going across period three, all the energies go up. So let's look at this. As you go across a period, ionization energy goes up, and that's also because attraction goes up. So we do not want to let go of our electrons. The protons really pull in tight. Now, as you go down a group, so let's, let's pick all of our alkali metals. So let's pick lithium. Here is sodium. Here is potassium. What happens to my ionization energies as I go down a group? 520, 496, 419. As I go down a group, 
ionization energy goes down because, you're right, it's all about attraction, because attraction also goes down. Now, if we look at this, this is kind of funny. Why does ionization energy decrease with oxygen and with sulfur? Um, so here we have oxygen. Its number is 13, 14. So here we look at this trend. 899, 801, 1086, 14, 13, 16. We see this little bump right here, this little jump. And we get that same kind of jump around sulfur. Let's look at the periodic table. Here is oxygen, here is sulfur. They are both in column 16, 6A, the Chalcogen family. So something is funny. They have similar properties. Um, we're going to have to go back to electron configurations to help answer this question. So if we look at our periodic table, okay, S1, S2, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. Now the P orbital wants to have either 6 or 3. Well, here we've got P4, which isn't 6, and it isn't 3. So let's see what, what's going on here. So if we have oxygen, we have our P orbital. It's going to be the same for sulfur, really, just different energy levels. One, two, three, four electrons. Is this a stable configuration? No. So what oxygen is going to be willing to do, it wants to kick this one out. So it wants to kick out that 4P electron. So kick out the 4P electron. Actually, I should say P4, not 4P. Sorry. I want to use it. So kick out the P4 electron. So if we look at this going down 14, 13, then up to 16. So this trend should be going up as we go down this group or go across this group. But we have this little kind of blip here because oxygen really wants to give away one electron. Same thing happens with sulfur, like increasing, increasing, increasing drops increases again, it has that same configuration. It wants to drop down to P3. So let's use our, our critical thinking skills. If oxygen and sulfur do this, what other elements might as well? Maybe selenium too. We'd have to check that out. Or you could say maybe things that are like D6, but we won't go into the deep metal block. There's a lot of complicated things going on there. Okay, so here's a chart of the first ionization energies versus atomic number. Just to note, the first ionization energy, that's how hard it is to take away the first electron from a neutral atom. So on this axis, we have the first energy, and here we have the atomic number. So what element in period two has the lower ionization energy? Period three. So here's period one. Um, here we have period two. Here we have starting period three. So let's go through and kind of figure all those out. So period two has the lowest ionization energy. So hydrogen, helium. Lithium is very, very low, so lithium. Period three is sodium. And if we had to make a guess, period two, period three, what do you think the lowest in period four will be? If you said potassium, you're correct. So for fun, let's do period four. Period four, and it's gonna be potassium. So in general, the alkali metals, they have the lowest ionization energy. That's why they are the most violently reactive. So as we go across the period, let's go from lithium over to neon. Let's go from sodium up to argon. Let's go from potassium up to krypton. What happens? Ionization energy increases. It goes up. But as I go down a group, let's look at lithium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. And let's also look at the noble gases, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon. What happens to my ionization energies there? It goes down. It's all about attraction every single time. So here's another question. Will barium have a greater or smaller ionization energy than cesium? Let's go to our periodic table. Here is barium. Here is cesium. Barium's further to the right. It's going across. So let's look at our, our trend. Um, let's see. So barium would be right here. It's not on the chart. So barium is going to have a greater. And why is it going to be greater? So what's our trend across a group? It goes up. So cesium is going next in the series. It's going to go up. So barium will be right here next to cesium. So it's going to be greater. And then let's look. Will francium have a greater or smaller ionization energy than cesium? So back to our periodic tables. Cesium, francium. Francium is lower. It is bigger. 
So if we go to our notes, well, francium would be somewhere over here off the chart. And look, this line is really going down. So francium is going to have a smaller ionization energy because it's all about attraction. There's less attraction. It's easier to get rid of that 7s orbital. So hypothesize, why is zinc greater than gallium? Here we've got this weird blip in the radar. Go to your periodic table. Zinc ends with D10. Gallium has P1. So if we are looking at configurations, zinc ends with 3D10. Gallium ends 3D10, 4P1. This is super good and happy. This is not happy. The P orbital wants to either be 0, 3, or 6. 1 is not 0, 3, or 6. So that electron is going to be easy to remove. So that, that is no good. But this is really happy over here. So this electron is going to go goodbye. Okay, now let's summarize ionization energy. So in general, ionization energy is increased to the right as we go across as attraction increases and as we go up. Noble gases um, usually will be included because you can pull away the um, you can pull away an electron. Um, good. Okay. So what has a greater ionization energy? Lithium or fluorine? So here is lithium. Here is fluorine. Same row. Fluorine is further to the right, so it will be fluorine. And it's because it is further to the right, there is more attraction. So fluorine wants to hold on to that electron and doesn't want to let it go. That means you need to put a lot of energy in to get it to leave. Um, next one, we have fluorine when we have iodine. So which one here will have the greater ionization energy? It's going to be fluorine. And this time it's because fluorine is higher up. There is more attraction. And now let's look at another example. We have barium or sulfur. So here is barium. Here is sulfur. Well, sulfur is up and to the right. So sulfur is um, to the right and it's also up. So sulfur is going to have the higher ionization energy because there's more attraction. Sulfur really wants to hold on to its valence electrons and gain more. Well, barium wants to throw them away and drop down to a, a lower shell. Okay. Um, I want you to pause the video and I want you to work through these next 10 problems and then come back and check. Your explanation should say things like it's further left or right, up or down, more attraction, less attraction, that kind of stuff. There will be a couple weird exceptions in the D block. If you look back at our previous page, there's some blips, you know, in it. But don't get too focused on those. Um, I want the general trend. So pause this video and try those next time. Great. Thank you for pausing the video and working through these all on your own. I think that most of these should have gone through and been pretty simple. But there might be one exception that might surprise you. Let's look at number three, argon and fluorine. Now, if you look at your periodic table, fluorine is one higher, but argon is one further to the right. So those rules are in direct conflict. It kind of is like, well, one's one row higher, one's more to the right. How do I figure out what wins out? The noble gas will always have the higher ionization energy. The noble gas has that complete configuration. It doesn't want to lose it. So if you actually look this up on a table, argon has a higher ionization energy than fluorine. Um, other one here, we have iodine and, and neon. Well, this one, it's quite clear. Neon is higher up and it's... Um, one to the right, so that one will win. I think I misspoke when I said this one. Argon is one lower than fluorine. Fluorine's higher up. Argon's one to the right. Argon wins, even though the rules oppose each other, because argon um, is the noble gas. And just take a second, scan through, check your answers. Um, you should write out a longer definition of why. It's because if it's further to the right, more attraction, doesn't want to give up electrons. Or if it's higher up, more attraction, doesn't want to give up electrons. It is all about attraction. So we're almost out of time on this video, but let's look at the next page. Electron affinity. So electron affinity, guess what? It's all about attraction again. Um, one note is to watch out for noble gases on this one. So last time we considered noble gases, this time we have to really keep a sharp eye out for all of our noble gases. And I will come back and finish this topic in the next video.